September last year in July, the Sensex had reached the magical figure of 15,000. And unbelievably, a few months later, in October, it also crossed the 20,000 mark. Today, in April of the next year, it is hovering around 16,500. Between you and me, I too would like to make some money on the stock exchange. But to be frank, I need to educate myself about the stock market. Would you like to join me? Come on, why don't we go and find out as to where and how is a share born? Markets are of two types. One is a primary market and the other is secondary market. Let us see what is primary market. Primary market deals with new securities, which means securities which are not available for the investing public previously. For the first time, either issue of shares takes place or issue of debentures takes place. This is the first offering to the investing public. The purpose of the issue is to raise funds for the purpose of raising capital of either a new venture or maybe the existing company wants to diversify or wants to expand its activities. Hence, for this purpose, for raising money to finance these expansions or diversifications or a new venture, a public issue is made of shares or debentures. The money is collected from public and it is a source of direct financing for the company. The uh, second type of market is secondary market. A secondary market is a place where investors like you and me can buy or can sell shares of different companies. Like it's a market where we go and buy certain things or commodities. Similarly, we go to stock markets for buying shares or for selling shares. But as in the other markets, we do it directly. Here in the stock markets or secondary markets, we cannot do it directly. We have to have a medium and that medium is called as a broker who is an authorized person to deal on the stock markets. Now he does the transaction on our behalf at our instance as per our instructions. The prices of the stock markets fluctuates according to the performance of the company, according to the projects that the company handles, according to the plans that the company has and hence the stock prices is called as the barometer of the company's financial health. When you and me decide to buy or sell the shares, we look at the price at which the shares are quoted. Accordingly, the various companies which are listed on the stock markets, they depict their shares value and accordingly the investors decide to buy or decide to sell the shares. So now I get it. There are two types of markets, the primary market and the secondary market. When a company issues its share for the first time in its life, that is called as a primary market and the issue is called as an IPO or an initial public offer. Subsequent sale and purchase of shares of this company are done in the secondary market. In this program, let us concentrate on the primary market and on the initial public offer. Suppose a company wants to make an initial public offer. Last year, when Reliance Power Limited came up with their new IPO, they tried to raise around 3.5 billion. I wonder how they arrived at that figure. Suppose you and me, we want to start a new venture, a company into software development and training. Suppose we need 3.5 billion rupees. Would we raise all of that from the share market? Why don't we find out from Mr. Sharad Vazey, who's a chartered accountant and a cost accountant. The project cost is normally segregated. In all these cases, the to certain percentage of the total cost is considered as contingency because when we think of a project, the prices ruling on that date and actual date of purchase, the prices may differ and that difference is taken care of by contingency provision. Now, when we determine about the project cost, say it is coming to say 50 crores, that means the total capitalization for a project is 50 crores. Now, this 50 crores needs to be financed. Now, for that, what are the sources of finance? Basically, there are two sources of finance. One is equity and the other is a debt. Now, equity may be in the form of equity share capital or a preferential capital or a debt may be in the form of, say, term loans from financial institutions or banks or a debentures. 
Now the recent example I can give you in respect of Reliance Power. In fact, Reliance Power has not even yet purchased the land. They have not finalized the machinery. They are not, the plans have not been approved. Yet they could raise about $3.6 billion in an equity market because the company has got a good reputation because it's from the Ambani group or the Anil Ambani group. And more importantly, they are in the infrastructure development project like power station, they wanted to have a power generation plants. Now naturally the power generation plants cannot be executed in one year, two years period. They may require three to five years. Now in that sense, if they would have borrowed in the form of debt, they would have been required to pay interest even this three to five years period. As against they have gone for equity form of finance, therefore next three to five years, they are not required to pay any, in, any interest and they will pay dividend if and only if after five years they start commercial production, they start earning profit and therefore they will pay the dividend. So the amount is determined by keeping two aspects in focus. First, the capitalization decision which relates to the entire amount of capital that is to be raised by the company. And the second regarding the capital structure decision which is the proportion of owned and borrowed capital. This means that a company never raises its entire capital from the share market. Let's speak to Mr. Umesh Kulkarni who is a chartered accountant and a company secretary. There are four permissions required. The board of directors, the shareholders, the SEBI and the stock exchanges where the shares are to be ultimately listed. The board, after considering the merchant bankers recommendation about the number of shares to be issued, the price at which the shares are to be issued, etc., will consider all these matters and decide the quantum of shares to be issued and the price will be fixed. The board will also convene the shareholders meeting because shareholders approval is necessary since the shares are not issued on rights basis. In the general meeting, the shareholders will give their consent to the public issue. This consent is necessary because the shares are not offered to them on rights basis. Once the shareholders approve the issue, the merchant bankers will prepare the due diligence of the issue and will draft the offer document. This offer document will be filed with the SEBI. The SEBI will raise certain queries, ask certain questions get more information from the company and from the merchant bankers and then will vet the offer document. CB will give its consent in the form of acknowledgement card. In the meanwhile, the company can approach the stock exchanges where the shares are to be ultimately listed. The stock exchanges will give their in principle approval to the issue that the shares after the issue is completed will be listed on the stock exchange. After obtaining all these permissions, that is the board's permission, the shareholders consent, the approval from the CB and the in principle approval from the stock exchanges, the company can now go ahead with the issue of shares. Okay, as expected, for our new venture, we do need to take a lot of approvals and permissions from various authorities such as the central government, SEBI and others. Well, it's time for a coffee break. From what I've understood what we've done so far in the first part, in the procedure for issue of shares, we need to first determine the amount, keeping in mind the capitalization decision and the capital structure decision. And secondly, we do need to take a whole lot of approvals and permissions. In the next part, we will be learning about preparation of prospectus and about filling up of the share application form. Us at the following.